The Xiaomi 12s Ultra is the best camera phone of all time, was what I kept hearing weeks before its release. It has the largest sensor ever put in a smartphone. It can take photos like a DSLR camera. Our task in this video is to take this camera apart and see if it lives up to the hype. We've paired it up with the newest upgrade to the IQ line of smartphones, the IQ10 Pro with its very own unique design, as well as a staple in our camera comparisons until they can do one better, the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. A new point system will be implemented with this video and I have no doubt that it will please many of you with more points given to the more important categories. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Let the facts speak. So straight into the details that you'll most likely also see in the video. The Xiaomi 12s Ultra has the most contrast, which is surprising considering the Galaxy S22 Ultra is usually the one that sits in that chair. The iQ10 Pro has the most sharpness of them all and is often brighter. Here's a good example for you. It is good for detail, but there are times where I find this sharpness overbearing. Same goes for the higher contrast in the middle. These are kind of consistent features for each individual smartphone and I feel it's important for you to realize these at the beginning so that you're able to better understand what you can expect from each camera. Check out this one and the warmth of the 12S Ultra will hit you instantly whereas it's the exact opposite for the IQ flagship which is quite cool in terms of white balance. Now, while this is all mostly personal preference, there are points where I find it hard to believe anyone could prefer the photo in the middle. There's just too much contrast and saturation on Xiaomi's side, with the green and red colors being too much for me to personally handle. My face and hoodie is also darker, and this is the point where Samsung and iQ take the lead because of the big inconsistencies with Xiaomi's camera software, which will hopefully improve in the future because the Mi 11 Ultra honestly looked better. Another warm photo by Xiaomi, sharp and bright by iQ, and something in the middle by Samsung will round out the main camera category as Samsung and iQ will take their first three points of the new season by both being able to take good quality photos consistently as Xiaomi will get two points. Before I forget, we've separated the ultrawide camera as a new category and we'll be giving one bonus point to phones that have a good ultrawide camera. It's rare to find this even on flagship phones and Samsung is the only one that will get the point here. The S22 Ultra has a decent ultrawide camera with accurate colors most of the time and doesn't artificially color the sky blue like the 10 Pro or have focus and contrast issues like the 12S Ultra. I can't really choose between the last two that I mentioned, but it won't change the result as Samsung has this one in the bag. So the way this is going could spell trouble for the Chinese brands as Korean software often trumps theirs with regard to portrait photos. You could have the highest quality lens and the biggest sensor there is, but the programming will always come out on top. Aside from the same traits of contrast and sharpness and yada 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 from the photos, the edge detection looks to be pretty good on all of them on average. I like the clarity that IQ gives me compared to the other two, but at the same time, I should also be able to blend in rather than looking like someone photoshopped me in front of a blurred background. The difference here will be the portrait selfies, as the higher quality front camera of the S22 Ultra does a better job, especially better than the 12S Ultra with a below average front camera, which we'll get around to later on. IQ takes second place as Xiaomi comes in third. Well, this is another batch of photos to add to my collection at home and I'm starting to think if I should open up a website to show off my modeling skills and biography. If I were to, what better way to do that than with Squarespace? It's a very efficient company that provides software as a service for website building and hosting. You're able to use pre-built website templates and also drag and drop elements to create and modify web pages, which is a perfect solution for many who don't have the necessary knowledge to make their own site. They make it easy for creators to monetize their content with member areas, give you insights to grow your business with analytics, create an online store to sell your physical or digital products, and even get you started with a best-in-class customizable website template. All you have to do is go to Squarespace, click on Get Started, choose a template, and the rest is fairly simple. 
The prices are very affordable for just about anyone wanting to create their own personal space, so check out squarespace.com versus in the description below to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And stay with us for better and improved bargains and also camera comparisons. Since I got to play around a little with the iPhone 14 Pro, I have to say that my standards have increased even more in this section. Take a look and tell me if any of them look great to you. 12s Ultra is sharper and has more details which does make me happy, but is also darker than the other two. I've never really been a fan of the Exynos chipsets with regard to video performance, and it does show time and time again how Samsung has really just dropped the ball here with this whole Exynos vs Snapdragon dilemma. It's just impossible to ignore how high the contrast of the S22 Ultra's videos are, and this makes the dark parts even darker. Combined with the ultra-wide footage, Xiaomi is a step ahead of iQ with more detail since the footage is just sharper overall. Unsurprisingly, all of these devices are also able to shoot 8K footage. I like Xiaomi's quality the most, but there are focus and stabilization issues. iQ's footage is too dark and the stabilization is just not there at all. Samsung has the best stabilization, but the footage is blurrier the farther away you look. Bring it all together and it doesn't affect the end game, as in my opinion, the 12S Ultra has the most consistent footage. The 10 Pro is looking slightly ahead than the S22 Ultra in general, but Samsung does have an advantage with better 8K, so they'll both be tied for second place with two points each. Here's hoping Samsung finds a solution for their not so great videos and lesser performance due to Exynos underperforming, and let's keep it rolling with stabilization. Samsung stabilization is pretty well known by now, but what impressed me was that even with standard stabilization turned on, you were still able to shoot in 4K on the iQ10 Pro, which is usually capped at 1080p on the majority of phones. While running, we turned on the highest level there was, with Samsung Super Stable, Xiaomi's Steady Video Pro, and iQ's Ultra Stabilization. Usually, the highest levels only allow you to shoot with the wide camera, but Xiaomi is the exact opposite as only the ultra-wide camera was available as an option. Even though it was a bit dark, Xiaomi easily outperformed the other two with their steady video pro and ultra-wide, as both Samsung and iQ had too much movement for my taste, granting them a second place finish with two points after Xiaomi. Zoom is usually a no-brainer when you have the S22 Ultra. At 10 times optical zoom is not easy to come by, but Xiaomi's Ultra phones are known to have 120 times and even higher max zoom than Samsung flagship cameras. Samsung is known to have a top-tier zooming algorithm, so you often see less pixelated and less blurry images when they're working their magic. Things do get really good for Xiaomi somewhere in the middle, as its optical zoom is really good. It's at this point that the S22 Ultra does slip out of reach at the max zoom level of the 10 Pro, and its upper levels of zoom have always been just a bit better than anything else out there. This phone is just the best when it's about getting close to objects, and for that reason, it will take the two points for the first place finish, while the 12S Ultra also showed a good performance and will be taking a point for its troubles. I wouldn't use the 10 Pro for zooming past its optical zoom, but every phone has their strengths and weaknesses, so that's perfectly fine. When you realize how mediocre the 12S Ultra's front camera is, compared to their widely marketed main camera, it's just hard to understand the reason. You don't have to be Samsung levels in how well you optimize your selfie camera, but at least make it somewhat comparable. For iQ, the photos are good, but the video is not. The S22 Ultra shoots at 4K, while the other two can only do 1080p video, but that's not the reason for the big gap in quality. It's all in the software, and that's where Samsung comes out on top once again with the gold medal, which means three points in the front camera category. I don't like either of the others, but iQ's flagship photos were at least decent, so I'll be giving them second place, and that brings us to a really cool feature that Xiaomi has in the ultra versions of their flagships, extreme slow motion. You've got a ton of FPS choices, but 480 is the maximum in 1080p, and I think it's beyond enough for cool footage with good quality. When you crank it up all the way, you have 3840 FPS on a 12S Ultra, and those are actually insane numbers. There's no way that anything will be able to top this, as the 960 FPS on the Galaxy is pretty high, but with mediocre video quality because it's actually upscaled instead of native 960 so it will just take one point by coming in second place. On the contrary, the software of Samsung is very well designed for macro, and Xiaomi's is not. Xiaomi has put in a macro mode in their phone, but it's just 
bad. What's funny is, without activating this macro mode, if you get close to an object it automatically switches to the ultra wide lens and gives you a better performance than the mode itself. I don't get how this stuff happens, but either way, the S22 Ultra can ever so slightly get closer than the 10 Pro, so 2 points to the former and 1 point to the latter in this section. Autofocus though is extremely close. Normally, we sometimes see a phone that has bugs or is just really slow in general, but for the most part, they are almost at the same speed of realizing when I come into the frame, so 2 points all across the board here. What is up guys, back with another long sought after camera comparison. We actually have a couple of brand new phones for you, so I'm sure you'll be enjoying this video from top to bottom. On this side, we have the upgrade to the iQ9 Pro, the iQ10 Pro, and I'm sure you saw the 9 in our previous videos. In the middle, we have the Xiaomi 12S Ultra. It's unfortunately not sold in Europe or America, so we had to order it all the way from China. And on this side, well, you already know what this is. It's the king of Android, the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. So, we're doing pretty much all of our audio stuff outside now because some devices have pretty good noise cancelling and it should be given props. The S22 Ultra here has that for sure, while the 10 Pro has crisp sound and the 12S Ultra is not the best when it comes to mic quality, so just one point for them in this section. The last section is going to be one of the Galaxy's favorite parts because they do take pretty good photos at night with their specially optimized software. The 12S Ultra of Xiaomi might be a step ahead with their 1 inch sensor though, allowing it to take natural photos that we often don't see during nighttime photography. I like this photo as an example. The photo in the middle has a more DSLR look to it than the other two as there is almost no added sharpness to the photo with the background being left as it is. And I personally really appreciate how this shot looks on Xiaomi's side. When you need the software to do something, you might be left hanging from time to time but when there's enough light like in this photo, it's really nice to see how the 12S Ultra creates portrait like shots. This shot showcases a narrow depth of field as a subject in it is in focus while the background shifts out of focus the further away you go. In my opinion, it looks much more artistic compared to the other two that utilize artificial sharpness. When there is zero light to go around, Samsung is a step ahead with their optimization, but in general, the Xiaomi 12S Ultra can make any scene look cinematic and natural. Ultra wide is not particularly impressive on any of the phones as nighttime footage is hard enough without having to switch to the lesser camera compared to the main shooters. Xiaomi will be taking the night photo section, so let's check out the night videos. The complexion of the S22 Ultra is really dark and red in the first video, but I can't say that either of the 12S Ultra or the 10 Pro excel in any way. Samsung continues to have blur issues in their videos which will be even more visible if you focus on the ground in all the second video. Ultra wide is just lacking all around, so Xiaomi takes the win at night thanks to their 1 inch sensor as IQ and Samsung are tied for second. Our first camera comparison in our new studio comes to an end as a third place medal goes to the iQ10 Pro with 18 points and overall solid performance. Second place will be taken by the Xiaomi 12S Ultra with 19 points and first place belongs to who other than the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra with 25 points. Xiaomi has released an incredible phone with amazing hardware but the lacking software will be the only reason they lose out on that gold medal, so here's hoping we see improvements in the future. Draw a like and a sub if you enjoyed this video as the iPhone 14 Pro is coming up next. See you around.